Let's get technical in the world of apparel and talk about three big competitors for athleisure and shoes, Nike, Lulu, and On On. Starting with the best chart, we got Rick Ducat on the technicals, Renita Young on the story, and right now On, which has had the best year out of all three of these, uh, is getting a buy rating from Needham and uh, I guess deserved at this point. It keeps going up. Oh yeah, shares are rising today, and Needham gave this company high praise today, talking about how it's the fastest growing name in consumer sectors, and about how it's a disruptive brand. The analyst also says that it's still in the early innings of it, so it's got a lot of room to grow as it continues to gain more and more support. So this analyst says that on on has secular tailwinds in health and wellness. And Needham thinks that the company's EBITDA margin has upside toward the high teens. And they say that the next catalyst for the company will be its investor day in Zurich on October 4th. So we'll find out what happens there. But so far, share price action so strong, up almost 77% year to date. Okay. Yeah, it's been crushing it uh, and uh, kind of taking the world by storm a little bit. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're a little late to the game initiating the coverage. I mean, like this thing's been jamming for a while, but I know that they're uh, also uh, covering Lulu too today. So the analysts has kind of got their hands full. Exactly, hands full. And you can see that they want to find out some sort of a sustained you know, growth strategy or sustain, I guess, popularity. We sure. don't know how long this buzz is gonna last, but they waited long enough to be able to say definitively, all right, we can cover this and it's positive. Okay, yeah, I like that interpretation. All right, uh, shares did slip off the highs, but not a downtrend uh, by any means, right, Rick? Yeah, I, I think that the short-term trend is a little more sideways, but ever since we had this March earnings event, it's been upward here. You can see that we formed a bit of a double bottom right here around this 2550 level, but we established some higher lows at this point here where we found some support near our purple 252-day exponential moving average. So that was an interesting development here. Uh, we can see as well that in the sh the medium term, I guess you could say, since those earnings. Price has been more of an upward channel here. We've got two trend lines encompassing the price action, both about parallel, both uh, trending upward here. But in the shorter term, since our last earnings event, we had a gap down. We've got a downward trend line to contend with here. So we're kind of at odds. We have an uptrend in the longer term, a downtrend in the shorter term. We're quite, quite close to breaking through it to the upside, but we're not really there yet. In terms of trend, we've got the uptrend, like I said, but our moving averages are mostly trending sideways. We're sandwiched in between our yellow 21 day and our orange 63 day exponential moving averages. Recent price action has also been kind of bouncing around this volume profile point of control near 30, our area of heaviest trading in the given time period. That's an, a supporter resistance point as well to watch. Momentum, not really helping us out either, kind of uh, just bouncing around that 50 midline here. So we've got a more unclear short-term trend and no momentum lean to really help us out too much. So uh, a bit of a bit of a quandary there. Uh, okay. So to the upside, if we do break out, we've got our orange 63-day EMA to provide us with some resistance. Then the $32 mark, which is a point where price topped out a few times, saw some consolidation, topped out once again. It's one of those sticky price levels where price frequently will will halt or bounce around it, uh, given the uh, uh, importance of this price level here. Mm. To the downside, this area. Once again, our con our confluence of our 20, uh, 252 day EMA and our trend line near about 2780. Looks like it could be a supportive area. Okay, so it does uh, kind of feel a little bit of pressure building a little bit. Uh, the stock we personify it for a minute because uh, bulls wanted to hold that level. Otherwise, suddenly you've got the possibility of closing old gaps, which would be pretty ugly if we started trading into the low 20s for on. That's not really in bulls playbook by any means. They'd rather see this thing more in the upper half of that channel that's trending upwards. At least earnings are behind us, so there's no big, big event uh, coming up until the next one in November. Maybe just the holiday season and spending to see how they do next to uh, competitors like Lulu. I feel like there's a lot these two brands have in common, Renita, uh, apart from just Lulu on on. It's kind of <laughs> like the same semantic structure. Yeah, you're right, semantics. And <laughs> in the fact that they're both 
still relatively new when it sure. comes to the investor space, and they're in the early innings of their growth cycle. And so this analyst over at Needham actually initiated Lulu with a buy and a $470 price target. That's around a 19% move to the upside from where it's been trading today. Now she is expecting double digit sales growth in the next quarterly earnings results and that the company's accelerating technical innovation will drive demand across its franchises and across the newer verticals, like it started to add in tennis and golf wear. And so this analyst also sees profitability rising for Lululemon as well. And we know that last week it actually got a similar note from HSBC, just talking about how it's in the early innings of its growth and it's got a lot of room to grow from here. Okay, all right. Uh, they kind of have this thing in common where they're meeting in the middle, where Lulu starts out with the clothing and athleisure wear, and then they're trying to get into the shoe business. Mm -hmm. Hasn't gone quite as well as they had hoped. On, on starts in shoes, trying to move into the apparel business. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you just go to the websites, they're like structured very similar. It kind of feels yeah. like you're shopping, uh, you know, at like uh, in the inverse of the other place to some extent. Uh, but that being said, still a good chart, Rick, even though Lulu's, you know, maybe not quite as hot, new, and fresh and trying to find new avenues of growth. The chart hasn't really broken down. It tried, but the bears couldn't really hold it down for too long. Earnings are a big catalyst for this name, at least based on the past year. About a 12% plus or minus move during our, our last few earnings events here. But the smallest one was the most significant one. Our last earnings event brought us up 6%, but it also brought us above this red line, the 386 level. You can see we formed a pretty obvious ceiling around that point. We had a few excursions to the upside, but nothing really lasted at all. We've, we've kind of struggled to make our way above that point. Now we can see we had that, that big break upward, new highs near 407 and today we're breaking above our trend line and our yellow 21 day EMA after finding some support at our orange 63 day EMA. So possible upside breakout here, momentum improving, uh, trend lines are all pointing upward, prices above all three of them. So since we're trending upward, more concerned about the upside potentially here. So 407, that's the point to watch to the upside. To the downside, our moving averages will act as support, but the main area, 386, that's really the line in the sand because we've got our, our 21 EMA, our trend line, and our horizontal support all kind of lining up at the same area. That's the point to watch. Mm, okay. Yeah, it really has uh, basically kind of pulled the trading into that range real tight. All the volume consolidating around there, 380. I like that it's got some historical reference too, which is the last earnings. Of, and that's a good reminder. The earnings are really big for this company. So given that they're still a couple months away as well, perhaps the sideways grind is the most likely situation for this right now. Perhaps, I mean, 386, if we get below that point, that would be the dangerous mark to okay. watch. All right, a little, um, you know, venture above that high volume area post earnings, but settling back down into it. So the pull of uh, 386 or so for uh, Lulu, like that chart. All right, last one, Nike, mm -hmm. different analyst for Bank of America, little uh, waning expectations here on their end. Yeah, waning expectations. Quick note on Lulu. We reported on that HSBC note on Monday, okay. not on last week. But Got with it. Nike, this morning we see a price target cut at Bank of America to $110 a share. That still leaves around a 15% move to the upside from where it's trading today. And the analyst kept a neutral rating. She think, He thinks that upward estimate revisions are actually unlikely this quarter. And one thing I'll personally be looking for this week is ever since Nike learned in June that it just can't do it, with direct to sales, direct to consumer sales alone, it started to bring back more wholesale partners. I want to find out how's that going for Nike. I caught that pun. Yeah. Yeah, they just can't do it. <laughs> uh, the stock really is having trouble here, uh, Rick, especially because, you know, there's so much alignment across the product line, but, you know, um, it's very bearish. Uh, and what, intermediate term? The troubles began here when we failed to take out our previous yearly highs, and since then we're down about 26%, just sliding lower and lower. Trend is down, 
moving averages are trending lower, prices below all three moving averages. RSI, we had a little bit of bearish divergence there. Uh, price was trending down, RSI was trending up, but we made new relative lows on the RSI yesterday, just by a hair, so that's been invalidated now. We did make our way back above the oversold area, but not looking very promising here. If we slip below 94, that was an area that caught my eye that was around where we had a gap. That could open the door to this area around 89 uh, based on our old lows. Okay. You know, it arguably kind of goes in order, the quality of these charts, in order of like freshness and newness. On kind yeah. of the hot new disruptor doing the best. Lulu still, you know, is a groundbreaker. But then Nike, it's not that the products are bad by any means. It's not that people don't love Nike and have the same allegiances folks do for Lulu or whatever are on. It's just that they've been around for a longer time. The growth is a little bit slower. And because of their big international presence, they're subjected to kind of more macro headwinds. It feels like um, that's maybe one way to describe these charts. On on, definitely the winner in the short term. Thanks, Renita and Rick.